Hey y'all, it's Patrick with Appalachian Anarchy and the Mighty Happy Crew, and today we're going to look through Banjo Bloodbath. So let's crack it open. Here's the session. Here we are, Banjo Bloodbath V1, and yes, I have started V2. Horatio is playing drums again. That boy hits them drums so good. I like it. And so, yeah. Uh, V2 is going to be fun. Sorry if you heard my toddler. My kids are down watching Bluey. So I can do this video for you. -y. And, uh, <laughs> sorry. I'll try to be more concise. So let's, let's start by just listening. Banjo Bloodbath. You've probably heard it, but if not, you'll be able to hear it. I'll scroll through the session. You can take a look at things and then we'll, uh, we'll hit section by section starting from the bottom. Moving on up. So, uh, Let's let's get going. Let's start at the beginning. Here we are. That's the song. Uh, like I said, I'm sure you've heard it, but if not, that's it. So yeah, let's let's kind of start with the drums because I think that's uh, you know uh, maybe the most interesting. I'm not sure. We'll we'll see. The drums I do with this little MIDI keyboard here. Right. And uh, those are about $30. If you're interested, you can do your own <laughs> MIDI drums. And then the guitar, or the uh, MIDI guitar stuff is what I use for, like, the fiddle and stuff like that. But we, we can talk about that later. But that that sends more information. This really just sends what, what note uh, on the keyboard, and it will trigger a sound. Um, like one is the kick drum, one is the snare. So they're not notes, they're triggering samples. Kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare. You'll hear that. Let's go ahead and listen. And then um, the all drums, that's kind of like the room, the room sound. And then all these ones in blue here, that's kind of the more close mic samples. So like... Uh, a little punchier and things like that. So we'll kind of listen around to some of the drums. Uh, here we go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's, you know, some of the drums, but there's, those are, you know, kick, snare, kick, snare, but this stuff here is, this is like the hi-hat and then the open hi-hat and uh, things like that. Let's find some toms. I think you'll, you'll like hearing some toms. I like hearing some toms. So here we are, some toms. That's this, this stuff right here. Um, there's three, three toms total, but they're not all going right here, just the bottom. <laughs> So the toms sound good. Oh, uh, ride. So the ride symbol is that big one that they ride on. Uh, drummers name their stuff really, uh, really well. Um, but here we are. So you can see like the ride and the bell of the ride are actually separate. So you can go, you know, like this. So, yeah, the hi-hat hits down here, uh, ting, you know, and uh, so that's, I, I don't know, that's about it with the drums. I don't know, you know, there's not a whole lot else to say. It's just these are triggering samples at a certain velocity, and, uh, and that's that. So let's move on up. So uh, here's, here's the bass and the guitar. Um, let's listen to the bass first. Um, 
with audio well so I've got the the RE20 and then the DI and these these serve different purposes but it's the same performance right so the RE20 that's the bass plugged in to an amp it's a six string bass so I can hit those those low notes on the B string um, but the RE20 is a pretty standard uh, bass microphone. Uh, they they pick up a lot of good low resonances. Bass, awesome on kick drum. I do, whenever I have the privilege to record drums, I throw the RE20 on the kick, inside the kick drum, and it sounds mm, real nice, real nice. And if you've ever listened to the radio, I don't know if anyone's listened, but the, the RE20 is is the radio mic for for when when men have that radio voice the re20 picks up those resonances so great mic here we are here's the bass i'll play for a second then then i'll solo <laughs> And also, I was I was zoomed in vertically. It wasn't clipping. You can see, um, for those of you who don't use Pro Tools, uh, I get used to just kind of have you know zooming in and out. But but that looks like it's clipping, but it's not. It's uh, the the data is there. I was just zooming with my mouse. So guitar, same idea. Um, sort well, sort of the same idea. So I've got the the microphone which is the the it's a tube amp with a sm57 which is pretty much the most standard microphone in existence it it sounds pretty good on everything maybe not the best on anything but pretty good on everything and it it uh it withstands high spl sound pressure levels so you can put it right up to a, a guitar amp and and get a, a nice punchy sound so that's what i've done here an sm57 and then a di although i think the bass i plugged into the avalon i think the guitar i usually go in just directly into the apollo and then i use a neve um, simulator amp simulator to kind of give it that that rock and roll sound right so here we are we got some guitar and you're gonna hear you're going to hear what I, you know, I've been talking about, not in this video, but previously. You'll hear it. Well, let me, let me find a better spot. Yeah. So you can hear it's pretty, I'm going to use the term bit crushed. I'm using a bit crusher and some harmonic distortions and... I've been, uh, I don't know if ridiculed is the right word, but I've been misrepresented here in talking about this subject. And the idea is I don't like it when, like, very clean instruments, like, like what you typically get with, like, MIDI stuff, interact in the same space with instruments that sound distorted and gritty and so my hope through all of this was to get them to play nice together by kind of crushing everything um down to a um down to a, a pretty low fidelity and so that was the goal was it right or wrong who knows subjective everybody's got their own tastes uh but my hope for this whole project, and this is probably more information than you want to, but it kind of stems back about, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago, um, I used to have this Tascam 388, and it's a Porta Studio 388. And by Porta, they're heavy, you know, they are heavy. So I don't know how they call them Porta Studios, but it's it's eight channel mixer with an eight track 
quarter inch reel to reel, right? And uh, a lot of bands do their, or did, used to, in, in, you know, the olden days of tape, they used to do demos on similar units. And, and uh, they have a, a really distinctive low quality. Because eight tracks on a quarter inch tape is not much tape. And you can kind of use that as a guide to say, if it's not taking up much space on the tape, like just a tiny little ribbon, uh, the, the quality and the, the fidelity so, or the, the, the frequency spectrum that's available to you will be highly, highly limited. So that's the sound I wanted. I, I used to record out in a, in a big, old, dirty garage with that 388. And that's the sound that I envision whether or not I've hit it yet, I don't know. But that's the sound I envision for Appalachian Anarchy is that that 388 in a big garage. So I'm bit crushing. And you can kind of just hear it's it's limited, limited range. And that, that's that was the goal here. Um, so yeah, all of those, the the amp, the DI, and the effects, they're going into the guitar bus. And then there is a little bit of, of reverb on that. So let's let's move on. I think that might have been too long um, to talk about those things. But life goes on just like this video goes on and on. So here we are. Let's let's listen a little bit. I, I uh, Mandolin, I did some with MIDI. Um, but it's really in the background, but here's like the, um, the audio. So this is, um, I played this on the man. Just, you know, simple, but it, it adds a little bit of that boom chuck to the sound, which I think, uh, in, in my mind is kind of what, you know, brings a little bit of the bluegrass into the rhythm section. Like most of the lead instruments are bluegrassy, but I did, I kind of, I don't, I didn't want it to sound like, oh, it's a metal band or a, you know, a heavier band playing and, you know, bluegrass playing over the top. So I think the mandolin serves this purpose of sort of, okay, there is some folk bluegrassy elements in the rhythm section and so that's uh that's that but then there's also you're gonna you'll recognize this lick i'm i'm sure here's the mandolin lead you know and so it's uh you know th there it is but uh let's let's go to the banjo now so oh i know what i want to say um there was a lot of people saying that the banjos sound, and I think this is PC, they sound oriental. But does it sound oriental? I mean, here, you, you tell me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Um, it really, really does. And I'm sorry about that, but that's, you know, this is the banjo sound I had. Let me, I'm going to pull it up, pull it over here. So uh, let me zoom over so you can see both. So this is the, the MIDI notes that I played on my, uh, my MIDI guitar, which, and I mentioned this a little earlier, but the MIDI guitar sends a lot more information than the, the keyboard does to the drums. So it picks up the notes, the velocity, just like the keyboard, but it also picks up like bends and things like that. So when I bend a string, it picks up that information and plays it through um, the instrument here. So that's, I think that's very helpful. And, and I, I'm really just, even though they, these aren't, perfect tools and 
and they don't always sound the the way I want them to or the way, you know, other people would want them to. I'm just grateful to to have them and I'm grateful to be able to make music in in this day and age cuz this all of this all of this would have been impossible, you know, just 15 20 years ago, you know, this I I um I'm just really grateful to to live and and make music today and and I'm glad that I'm glad that y'all are on along for the ride and and we're going to do the best we can. We're going to make some good stuff and we're going to have fun. And that's just going to be that's going to be how it goes. So anyway, here's so here's the banjo sound. There might there's probably better banjo sounds out there, but I don't own them. I I own this one. So It's far from perfect, um, and and yeah, uh, it's Opus. It's an East West. It's like a subscription, so you pay you pay the subscription, and you can use all their sounds. Um, and for certain things, I think it's perfect. But I'm kind of using it in ways it wasn't intended to be used. And so um, this is the banjo sound I have, and you can see. It, it it's playing them it's it's uh you know anyway i lost my train of thought a little bit but yeah that's uh that's the banjo sound it's probably the weakest link i think i mean the drums are kind of a weak link but the banjo is sometimes it works Sometimes it works fine in the slower sections where it's a little more um, exposed. I I feel like it doesn't work very well. So let's uh, let's do something fun now. Let's listen to some fiddle. Let's listen to some fiddle here. Um, and this I think is my favorite part right here. This part I I spent quite a bit of time trying to make it sound as real as I could. So. Um, there's different, again, it picks up the bends, it picks up the hammer-ons and pull-offs, slurs those, those notes, but then there's also like different articulations and things like that. So let's, let's listen to some fiddle here. And uh, that one I'm actually pretty proud of. I, I feel like that, that sounds, uh, that sounds pretty good. Now, when we have a real fiddle player play it, ooh, it sounds better. So you watch out for V2 and you watch out for music going forward because we're, we're stepping it up. We're stepping up the production, no doubt. Um, so anyway, so the fiddle sounds as good as it can. Some, some songs I feel like I got it sounding better than others um but i guess there you have it uh that's banjo bloodbath sorry this video got a little long hopefully you enjoyed it i um i know i'm not a a tv or radio personality but i have i I'm, i've done my best i'm uh i'm in a good head space right now i think might be a little <laughs> i've been traveling and everything and working and staying up late so i'm a little bit a little congested little little sick i guess but overall uh, you know i'm in a good headspace happy to be home happy to be back in the studio it's been a while and uh, i'm gonna get get a lot of work done this week a lot of music work hopefully get the next releases ready um and uh and that's that so i do want to really quick just thank you all the uh i mean we, we've had some we've had some some bummers on on this ride but all the all you insanely cool people who have commented and listened and liked the music not not just clicking like but really enjoyed it i mean that that makes my heart happy that i mean that's why I do any of this. It, 
is. I mean, it's supposed to make people happy, you know, and I, I, I'm, I'm happy that I can, I can share it now and have, um, have people listen to it and know that people are enjoying it. And so I'm really, really incredibly grateful to all you cool people. And I hope that some of the people who have had less positive things to say can can come around and just maybe try to enjoy life with the rest of us. Oh, I am rambling. All right, we're done. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. If you enjoyed it, let me know if you think I'm a twit. Goodbye.